Picasso was a great genius and arrogant with it. Living in luxury in the south of France, he was famous as no other 20th century artist, except perhaps one. The only artist whom the mighty Picasso greatly admired and felt threatened by was the mighty Matisse. Matisse liked hotels, not for themselves, but because they set him free to devote himself to the one thing that mattered to him, his art. In our century, it's always been clear that we've been lucky enough to have two painters of great distinction and genius, old masters in the making. And when I was young, people always said Picasso and Matisse. But I've noticed with great interest and satisfaction that now they're tending to say Matisse and Picasso. Not that it matters, of course. Matisse draws his viewers into the paradise world of Nice and the Côte d'Azur. His are some of the most dazzlingly beautiful paintings ever created. It was colour that was crucial to Matisse. And he believed it was not merely a way of describing shape, but a way to express emotion. Look at what he painted when he went to Morocco. A young warrior from the Rift Mountains. And although it is wild and passionate, it's so marvelously controlled. Look how he's contrasted the background with that strange magenta floor, all contrasting with the monolithic stillness, the simplicity of the warrior himself. And he's alert, he's vital. He could spring up at any moment and attack or flee or just look at us with that strange and daunting look. And what makes all this painting cohere? all the colors come together, is the face. And only Matisse would have dared to paint a face that's yellow and red and green. It not only makes the picture work in color, but it makes us understand the young man, to understand that we don't understand him. He's beautiful, he's graceful, he's full of dignity, but he's alien. Oh, what an electrifying image. Matisse always paints joy. Light, color, beauty, these are his themes. Old and sick, his thank you to the nun who had nursed him was to design this chapel in Vence. It seems to me too simple and stark to be a typical Matisse, but when sunlight floods through the windows, you can see the essence of Matisse, radiantly unchanged. Matisse had the two greatest gifts an artist can be blessed with. He could draw like an angel, and he was a superb colorist. 
And here in Beasts of the Sea, you see both of those gifts used to perfection. But notice how he's done it. He was too ill and old to paint. So he got his assistants to cover great sheets of paper with the colors he wanted. And then he drew on them with the scissors. As you can see, two great cross sections through a lagoon. And he's filled them with seaweed and sea snails and fish and all the fascinating magical things that I'm told are under the sea. The layers of colour as one moves up through the sea. He makes one feel the, the joy of this, the wonderful floating sense of freedom as you go up and up and up. This painting, this cutout, gives us such exquisite pleasure that though I hardly dare to say this, I don't think Matisse ever painted anything greater.